It's not the pressure. It's just a matter of I need to get everything ready and, you know, and, and get the house ready for Thanksgiving. How many people this count? Um, recently, it might be 18 based on a few texts. This what was it? From cousins what was and it? Nieces. Two days ago. Eleven. Okay. We're going to be at twenty-five or twenty-eight again. You know we are because we are always around twenty-five or twenty-eight when it is all said and done. So why do you pretend it's ever going to be smaller? So Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. Hi. Hi. Uh, Aaron uh, realized something today. She said, "Hey, let's go shopping for Thanksgiving together. Let's go It'll shopping and doing that." You know why it doesn't work? Because I go in with a focus. I'm going like this. I'm not even looking. Yams, red potatoes, this, that, the other, sage behind me, look at that. And then she is off going, look, sprinkles, you know, and it... Okay, does, you can't deny the dumplings would have been a nice touch. I was just... it, it's sprinkles. And I'm like, you got to get back over. We're pushing the... We're getting out of here. We're getting it in a car. Yeah. Yeah. Todd does all the cooking, so he so cooks Thanksgiving not, dinner. Primarily, my job is just to she, no, she's seriously set the table and then keep the kids out of his and way. I'm, like, and boom, I'm okay sage, with that. Boom, stuffing, doom, doom, I doom, just, and she's like, "Hey, look, look, squirrels!" You know, like that. Look how short you are. Um, anyway, the point being, um, there's there's some pressure. There is some pressure. Family's coming over. You know, there's a certain amount of anxiety because if you've got one of those families, and I think all of us are, there's going to be liberal sides, there's going to be conservative sides. Those political? And it has ever, it's gotten really intense recently during recent political events, and, and families have talked about the fact that they no longer spoke based on some of the the battles over Thanksgiving okay, dinner. All right, all right, so. It was a thing. And so and the, like old hurts might come up or there might be old issues or things that never got resolved or simmering resentments. My, my answer to this is join together in a unifying uh, practice and we're going to go out back in the woods and rake it. That's okay, why we're not allowed to is, talk politics. The important thing is this. Dr. <laughs> Julie Hanks... One of our dear friends she and one of so the smart. smartest women I know she is. has got a couple of foolproof techniques to stop fighting dead at the Thanksgiving dinner table. Because right. let's be honest, the last thing you want after all of this work is to have more family okay. members hate each other. Let's get some help. Let's make it nice. Okay. I don't think I have ever seen so much like genuine hatred between families until the political arena in the last few years. And no matter who you're voting for, and at this point, I, I don't care. And not only that, I don't want to know because it will just make it worse. Yeah. I have never seen so much anger between families. I mean, genuine rage. This isn't even bringing up old hurts from the past. This is, this if is you current. like this person, you should die. And I've got, you know, I've got the fork that was stuck in the turkey and I'm coming for you. Mm -hmm. When did it come into this kind of like crazy rage between families? And why at the holidays? <sighs> the holidays, every, everyone's under slept overfed, over-sugared, right? It's like the worst, we're all like in our worst self. <laughs> I'm buzzing and I'm tired. And then st stressed out. <laughs> so it's kind of a bad combination to get people together, first of all. But the political landscape the last couple of years has been so divisive. I mean, it, it really has. And there's a book called The Righteous Mind, and he, he talks, I forget the author's name, but he talks about how we make political and religious decisions based on how we feel and then we find facts to back up how we feel and it's an emotional thing interesting and that's why the conversations i think get so heated because it's it's hitting us emotionally in our core it's not we think we're debating facts but we're not you're questioning my self-worth now right? so, yeah right. my intellect per, it's more personal interesting. it's my core um, values or, or feelings and so I think that's why it becomes so volatile but I I say for the holidays you know cut off those conversations I say frequently to family members you know I'm just not interested in having this conversation right now how can you as the hostess or an outsider going this is gonna explode how do yeah. you intervene and get it down yeah well I think you could just say hey you know what I'm starting to feel really uncomfortable I'm concerned this is I mean you say that I'm I'm concerned this is going to get out of hand. Can we dial it back? And these are hard things to say because you're actually stepping outside of the social norm and going, I'm addressing what's happening right. here instead of pretending, in yeah, pretending it's fine, which yeah. is what we always do. Right. Or we're like, okay, dessert is served, right? Distraction. But, but go toward the awkward. We tend to go away from it, but if you mm -hmm. go toward it, it usually works out better. 
So it's, it's like, oh, this is going to escalate. Go toward it. You know what? This seems like it's escalating. <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm really worried that this is going to ruin our dinner. Can we, you know, tone it down? Um, so obviously political is a big thing. It's always been there. Another one that I've always found interesting uh, that my dad, who is also in mental health, laughed at constantly is that we all instantly assume the roles that we had in the family as children. Mine was being crazy, which is probably not too surprising to you, although I am now the diplomat in the family. But how, why do we automatically go, I'm going to become a five-year-old again? What happens to us? We're you thinking know, adults. I know. We... When we get in that dynamic, it's so powerful because that that family dynamic was what formed us. It's the most familiar thing to us. And so it makes perfect sense that we just go back to that familiar place where people play the role that everybody expects them to. And yeah, it happens with all families. Um, I think being conscious of it is really important to go, oh, I'm not crazy, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not the baby. Well, that still could be happening, but we're not going to, you know, I'm trying not to bring it up at Thanksgiving, but yeah. Or like, I don't have to be the peacemaker anymore, or I don't have to be the scapegoat, or I don't have to be the, the baby. And, you know, whatever your role is, making it explicit to yourself just, I, and kind of reclaiming your adult self in that family system. Maybe it's something we could prepare for a little bit in advance. Like I said, I've had enough time and enough therapy to, to go, oh, this is my, that was my job. That's good. Yeah. But for people who maybe don't know and they just sort of go into it mindlessly, but then they come up feeling terrible, mm -hmm. how, do you how do you kind of analyze the dynamic before you get into it? Is, are there some steps that you can take that make you remember that, no, you're an adult and you have value? And what should you do? Yeah, well, I think just being able to name things is powerful. So, you know, ask yourself, Okay, if I were to give my role a label, what would it be? The perfect child, the jock, the scapegoat, the, you know, how, what would that label be? And then what would you like it to be as a grown adult? So when you go into that situation and people start treating you the way they would have treated you as a child, mm -hmm. how do you change it? How do you handle the dynamic? So you don't respond like you would have when you were a child. Which right? is so hard. You respond from the responsible adult place in you, right? The, the, who you want to be and who you are. Uh, but when you don't respond in a predictable pattern, it breaks the cycle, it breaks that pattern. So smart, and then they're all shocked. And they're like, whoa, she's <laughs> grown up. <laughs> Whether you want me to or not, give me the stuffing. Um, so. You know, it, one of the hardest things I think about coming back home for a lot of people is just reliving some of the old hurts or some of, there's going to be one person you look at and I've had friends who've told me stories that I'm like, you don't have to go home, but that's a topic for another time. Mm -hmm. But you're home and there's going to be somebody there that was awful. Maybe it was your dad. Maybe it was a, whoever it is. Yeah. This is going to bring up really hard feelings for you, but you don't want to lose the rest of your family. How do you handle the really painful part of coming yeah. back? Well, I think having somebody to talk to about it, so if you have a partner, if you have a best friend, being able to process it can be really helpful. Like beforehand, saying, you know what, I'm worried about this, I, let me talk through it, and then kind of debrief afterward too, saying, okay, here's what came up for me, um, I, I felt really powerless My, you know, when I saw my brother who abused me, or I mean, horrible things happen in families, right? And And we still, we still get together and, and try to work it out. But processing it out loud with someone else can be really helpful. This is not necessarily a plug, but it's actually a really good time to ask because my greatest fear in the world are people going into uh, fine mental health professionals because I, I know that there's a few that I feel safe recommending. Can you give uh, your, your Wasatch Family Therapy, can you explain uh, how they could reach you or they could reach one of the professionals here? Because this is probably a really good time, even if you want like a refresher mm -hmm. to yeah, maybe ask to if check you check in. Yeah. 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 So, so WasatchFamilyTherapy.com is our website, mm -hmm. and our phone number is 801 944 4555. Okay, and so you have, you have a, a clinic here on holiday, you have one up in Bountiful, so you're nicely sort of in the middle located so they could come by and get some check-ins and yeah, see how they're doing. We also have a blog that we update weekly so there are a lot of resources um, just you can also search holidays and find some holiday articles. <laughs> Alright so wasatchfamilytherapy.com uh -huh. okay and so yeah we've talked about then kind of how to diffuse stuff at the dinner table even if you're the one who has to step in from outside and the magic phrase again is I really don't 
I'm just not interested in talking about this right now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm writing it down on my phone. Okay. I'm not being subtle here. And then uh, dealing with people that maybe have been hard for you. Um, the, uh, what else can we do to make it uh, happy, uh, better? Because there's so many things that obviously bound us together as a family, so many right. good memories. Are there things that we can bring up, think, props we can use, ways that we could redirect attention that would make people remember why we loved each other? You know, something that's, I, that's really can bring up some poignant and fun and uh, um, memories is watching old videos or looking through old pictures and reminiscing together. So sometimes we do that alone, like looking through a scrapbook or whatever. But, but doing that as a group and talking about, remember that trip we took? Or um, that can refresh us like, oh, the joy. Yes, that, that was so fun. We did like each other. That's yeah. right. Yeah, so that can be a really fun thing to do. Um, to, or just asking you, what, what are your favorite, favorite memories of childhood? We actually do that at birthdays when people in my family have a birthday. Mm -hmm. We go around and say what's our, what our favorite memory is of that person. Uh, but it's really a tender, sweet thing. We do that, too. Do that. I love that. Because you're right, the things that people remember are so unusual and so surprising. Yeah. That's, I love that. Um, does the hokey old things I'm grateful for at Thanksgiving really work? Trying to make yeah. people drag that in? Yeah, it, it really does. Um, you can never be grateful enough, right? <laughs> or practice <laughs> gratitude. It's a, it's a practice. Practicing gratitude, and this is a great time of year to do that. Okay, and then the one last question I wanted to ask is, it goes kind of back to family roles, but um, this goes back to my childhood where the women would cook and the guys would watch football. And then the women would start washing dishes. And, you know, I would get to an age where I'm like, oh, my God, Aunt Charlene, go sit down. It, you know, and I would go after the turkey basters and the big, horrible roasting pans. But is there a way to break out of some of those roles? Because I see a lot of resentment with friends of, well, I always have to be the one who cleans up. Or they never do anything, and it's my group that has to do this because it's always been that way. Right. Is there a way to address that beforehand so that that resentment, those old resentments don't keep coming back up? Yeah, that's a great question. So giving assignments ahead of time. So, okay, all, you know, the adult men, you guys are on the cleanup crew. That's going to involve some shock and consternation. <laughs> right. <laughs> and setting boundaries and saying, you know, if you're not willing to do that, I'm not willing to cook. So you either cook or clean up, which one? And kind of negotiating. Um, the thing that drives me crazy is when people act like a martyr, but they don't set any boundaries. <laughs> So mm -hmm. True. It's like, oh, poor me. It's like, set some boundaries. Set some boundaries. No, I'd Ask rather just wash dishes till 2 o'clock in the morning because <laughs> nobody loves me. And cry. I mean, the expectation traditionally has been women do the cooking and cleaning. And hello, 2018, right? It's If you haven't already challenged that, it's time to challenge it. I love that. Okay, so assignments for everybody and mm -hmm. well beforehand so there's no true shock the day of that, oh my God, I didn't realize I'd actually have to look at a dishwasher. Yeah. I love it. That's perfect. Any final things, any thoughts about about traveling back? Because there's a compulsion. We all do it. And it's not just duty. It's because we want to be close again. But yeah. it's, you know, the, the anxiety that, that can really taint it. Any final advice? Yeah. Whatever you're feeling, like acknowledge it and then move through it. It we have this expectation that holidays are just supposed to be all positive and they're not they're just not sometimes so it's okay um you don't have to be depressed about the fact that it's not perfect or it's not always happy so if if feelings come up feel them and then move forward the todd and aaron daily stream is brought to you by pc laptops with desktops and laptops starting as low as 7.99 with a lifetime parts and service warranty they fix phones too go to pclaptops.com and by brio technologies they rent sell and install audio visual components including professional sound lighting video and intercom systems components projectors interactive whiteboards and classroom audio systems just go to brioaudiovisual.com I have the weirdest tell me something good ever. By the way, welcome back to the Todd and Aaron Daily Stream. You ready for this one? Is it's it, local. It's local. Where local? Do we know? In the spirit of Thanksgiving, okay. hundreds of animal rights activists will oh, be boy. rescuing 100 turkeys. Okay. Rescuing. From the Norbest Farms in Moroni today. Right. Okay. Now, here's why. This all started with a really weird episode with direct 
Action Everywhere. It's DXC, which is uh, Animal Rights Activism. Okay. And what they do is they go in and they document uh, like a factory farm abuse and mistreatment of animals. And then they go in and they take the most injured animals, which is stealing, because they break into the farm, take the animals and leave. Now, okay. I'm torn on this a little bit based on my it's past a, history with legal. activism. Yeah, but you're yeah. saving an animal that's suffering. And if it's clearly documented... I, I would do it. Some people report that to certain agencies and agencies. Which is exactly what happened. Oh, good. So there were several So there were several activists that are now facing charges, felony charges, in Utah court based on okay. this. Okay, all right. Here's where it gets interesting. Now, uh, Wei, Huang uh, Singh is the founder of DXA, the animal rights activist. Right, right, right. And um, Rick Pittman is the owner of the Norbest Farms system here in Utah. Yeah, so both sides. Now they had contacted each other based on some of the information, and and uh, these were not the the Norbest farms under Rick's direct control, but it was one of the feeder farms that okay. sent their their turkeys as product to the, his farms to okay. be all right, used. All right, all right, now, yeah. so knowing this and having found out about it, he had already removed them from his list of suppliers, and it also stated, okay. I've reported you to that's the Agricultural very, Commission. It's very, very uh, responsible. And it's interesting because it started a dialogue between him and Wayne with the activists, right. and they have sort of this weird, unlikely friendship now. And so what they thought the right thing to do was, is they said, okay, we can't address the legal charges because that's now in the hands of the prosecutors, but right. what we are going to do is we wanted to have kind of a meeting of the minds this week. So the They're animal going to rights, sit down over a Thanksgiving Day meal? The animal rights <laughs> activists are bringing vegan food <laughs> for the employees and the locals in Moroni. Mm -hmm. So they're making a vegan Thanksgiving dinner. Mm -hmm. And in return, Rick and his farm are yeah. allowing them to rescue 100 turkeys and take them away to Grandpa's farm or wherever else where, they're where taking do, them. Where do you put 100 turkeys? Well, there's there's actually reserves and retreats and and rescue areas. Retreats, mm -hmm. turkey retreats, where they they do meditation with their claws. They get massages. No, but it's cool. But I just thought that was the most interesting that mix because it started from something sucky, <clears throat> and two people who were so diametrically opposed became friends, and they went, right. okay, let's 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 hug this sat, out. They sat down and they broke tofu together. Isn't that beautiful? That is so beautiful. Uh, I, I will. Now... I just I, I'm sorry. I thought it was adorable. I saw another group uh, in town for flat earthing. No. They had a truck. And it had like information and a website and all. And I looked it up and <laughs> they're idiots. Um, well, it's online. It must be true. So uh, I was thinking about that. And then I saw this thing about Bill Nye uh, today. And I was just like, Bill Nye, the here. science guy. Bill He's so Nye, cool. Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill. So um, um, going to the moon. Is he for it? Yes or no? I would assume yes, right? Going to Mars. Yes or no? I would assume yes, right? You're incorrect. Bill Knight does not want us to go to Mars. This is this is his take on this. You don't want to go colonize Mars. You don't want to go and live there. You don't want to raise your kids in Mars. You go from one dome to another. And he said he understands that there's polar caps, which means... Potential of water. Right. And maybe a past civilization. Perhaps. But he said what there is lacking is something he likes to call... Air. Well, I'm pretty sure we bring that with us in forms of some kind of generators and stuff. Can you imagine a five-year-old in a dome full of air with a sharp stick? And what could happen? I would assume the domes would be relatively sturdy. Now, the, here's the other point he made. And, and uh, if, if you've ever seen the Mars rover, um, I will use this pineapple as an example, as a model. Uh, this is the, the lunar m rover. Okay? okay. And this is on a really good day. Activate rover. Is this based on solar cells? Turn the rover. Do you get the point? No. Rovers are really slow. Okay, so that what does that have to do with the dome and the oxygen and the five-year-old? <clears throat> Bill Knight says, send people there. Send scientists there. They said, astronauts, um, Marsonauts. Um, I just made that up. That was good. I know. Right? I know. He's going to steal it. Trademark, Todd. Uh, they are going to, uh, they can do in five minutes what it takes your pumpkin robot to do in a week. It's a pineapple robot. Because it's like, eh. 
he's not going anywhere. You see that? And the guy can run over, woman run over, and grab rocks, and they put them in the thing. They take sensors. They go like this, and like this, boom, boom. So he back advocates, on the ship. He advocates research on Mars, but he does not advocate colonizing. Exactly. I still don't think his... Because of that thing. His thinking is reasonable, but okay. Called air. Once again... I'm pretty sure they'll bring some with them. No, you can't bring that much air. And they're talking about raising families. You can there. do generators. And, and, and it's not. First of all, um, a sex in space <laughs> must be really weird and involve a lot of Velcro. Anyway, my point being, back to that. Uh, so I'm not Bill sure Nye, you have one at this point. Because we've Nye traveled said, from flat earth, earthers to pineapple rovers to Velcro. Amazing, isn't it? It all happens right up here. All right, there's one more thing we wanted to talk about today, and you are so excited about this, and this kind of goes along. Hey, stay with me. Uh, this kind of goes along with... with uh, I've gone so far off the beaten path with you that I'm not even sure I can four-wheel back to the, the highway of logic here, but I'm going to try. It felt a little weird with the pineapple coming in, but now I'm okay with it all. Uh, there is a plan, and you are so happy about this. This is so exciting. Now, we even have a preparation board on, on Pinterest, and it's called Prepare to the Zombie Apocalypse, because I'm going to be honest. If there's going to be an apocalypse, I want it to be a zombie apocalypse, because all the rest of them seem even more depressing, mm. if that is possible. Now, at this point, you're thinking, there's no way that the U.S. government has even taken this seriously, but you would be wrong. You're wrong, mister. This is so exciting. Now, here, here's the deal. The U.S. military is actually on the case. Uh, U.S. Strategic Command, which is the Con Plan 888-11, is a detailed plan for counter-zombie dominance. It was prepared by a group of junior officers. Now, it came to the public attention at a couple of... Junior. Uh, days ago, and it's festooned with disclaimers saying, you know, that it's based on a fictional scenario. However, they say undead hordes shambling through the streets would be treated the way one would any other invader. Since they can't be deterred or bargained with, they must be destroyed immediately. So they believe that uh, because the zombie forces will become stronger with each human casualty, because mm. each human casualty becomes a zombie, it's important to create hardened, protected sites and guard critical infrastructure. So what they are unfortunately believing is, number one, the zombies are drawn to the human populace, and number two, that they can't swim, which I think is unwise, because we also learned from World War Z that they can swim. But let's just move on from that. But what they're saying is, is that they, would, they had a plan where once that you're a civilian and you're taken by military, you're not allowed to go back for loved ones. They say by then they'll be infected. It's too late. Screw you. Now, here's the other problem. They're also advocating nuclear weapons. They say that um, what they would plan to do is utilize the nuclear weapons to destroy the large concentration of zombies. And then, of course, then just go hunt down Poison with reconnaissance, the, the rest. Yeah. So the interesting thing, though, is that... They, Junior officers. They, they documented <clears throat> the advisory based on the popular culture references, which I thought was Docu kind of cool. Documented. And they said right now, they said their plan was to build enough of a food storage for the refugee centers and, and the military to last for 40 days because they said by then, most of the zombies will have died from decay or lack of food, which is we've which also they found know, out. Which they absolutely know is fact because my daughter plays Minecraft. But wait, there's a subclause. Are you ready for this? No. Now, this is actually written in the reconnaissance documents. They say, of course, there is a risk the invaders will turn out to be evil, magic, zombies, or EMZs. In which case, there is little that a mil conventional military force can achieve. They said the chaplain corps may be the only viable means of combating EMZs. Adding ominously, atheists could be particularly vulnerable to EMZ threats. Now, here's the most inspiring part of the entire thing, because they go through the entire military document, all of the things that they would do, and at the end, they end up with a cheerful uh, concept. They say, the last survivors uh, who last 100 days um, will be able to take advantage of, the, of what is left of the Earth's resources. They say, however, that your chances of beating the zombies is 0 0.0088. And you made fun of my pineapple? This is an official military document. <laughs> EMZ? Written on a lunch bag. 
Okay, so just a, just a thought. Um, EMZ. All right. Uh, you guys have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. I think we would be part of the 0.0088. Oh, by the way, uh, if you would like to, you can go to Mistletoe Mania, which is one of our new Facebook pages. Also, The Beautiful Dark, which is all about Thanksgiving and Halloween. And then, of course, Tell Me Something Good. Any one of those pages, we would lovely and happily welcome you on Facebook. And then, of course, if you want to like or share the show today or comment, it also enters you to win dinner for four at Christopher's Prime Steakhouse, providing that the... <coughs> Evil magic zombies. Don't get you first. All right. You guys have a good day. I'm going to explain this with a flow chart to Aaron. Okay? It's an official military document, Todd. No, I'm going back to my story. Oh, God. Uh, so you got Bill Nye here, right? Yeah. And you got the moon there, and there's no air, and you don't bring kids because they're going to puncture I the dome. I thought it was Mars. And then, yeah, whatever. And, and then over here, the sex thing. And then back over here, oh, I'm missing a circle. Uh, back over here, hmm. the Velcro. What about the and flat then, earthers? Oh, for, oh, flat earthers, they'd fit in right about here. Really? And then you go. And you're questioning my evil magic zombies. <sighs> you can't fight with science. Bill Nye, the science guy.